I want to thank all of you who are here. It means a great deal to us that when we, as the Department of Pediatric Orthopedics and Sports Med Medicine put together this conference, that so many of you have found it um, as part of your weekend to be with us to learn more about musculoskeletal care. I'm Suzanne Yondo. I'm the current Chief of Pediatric Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, following on a legacy of some phenomenal leaders in children's orthopedics. Um, as Dr. Mosca mentioned this morning, today is a very special day and not because of a royal wedding. <laughs> How many Starbucks cards did you have to give away? That cost you a lot of money. The, the, the throwdown was if they could mention the royal wedding in their presentations, they got a $5 Starbucks card. So <laughs> the challenge was on. I want to thank Tom for taking so much time to organize this conference. Tom, you are a phenomenal educator. And following along the lines of Dr. Staley as an educator, I really appreciate you being uh, willing to do that for us. So thank you, Tom. So there are two people that are going to speak to us about um, Dr. Staley, Dr. Lynn Taylor Staley. Um, before they speak, there's something that I wanted to say to you, and that is education and sharing of our knowledge with others, the next generation, is singly, in my mind, one of the most important things we do in medicine. This individual, this man, has shown us how to be that kind of educator, to make conferences like this go on, to bring the knowledge that we have to everyone around us to improve the care of the children that we take care of. And so, without further ado, I'd like to bring Dr. Vince Mosca back to the podium, followed by Dr. Bob Sowen, the Surgeon Chief of our hospital. I won't be redundant in the comments I made earlier, but just um, just to mention again, because it was the first thing this morning, maybe some of you weren't here, but to mention that this eponymous uh, conference is because of the work that Dr. Lynn Staley has done in his very, very long career. He uh, came to Seattle in 1963 for his orthopedic residency training, and then several years later, he became the first really official chairman, director of the Department of Orthopedics in the hospital at that time was called Children's Orthopedic Hospital, as it had since 1907. It didn't change names until I got here in 1985. I was a little insulted, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but he came to the Children's Orthopedic Hospital, which was a full service children's hospital at the time. He just developed this program into the national and international powerhouse that it is. And he's an orthopedic surgeon. He learned how to diagnose conditions of the musculoskeletal system in children. He developed operations. He developed understanding of pathologic conditions. He was the one who actually figured out that in-towing and out-towing in children is normal. Get over it. They'll outgrow it. <laughs> he figured out that flat feet are normal. And if you wait long enough, most flat-footed children will develop arches. He's the one who did that research. So yes, he invented some operations, but yes, he invented a lot of reasons not to do surgery in children. Those are powerful. Those are really critical. I mean, surgeons want to be known for surgery. He wanted to be known for helping children. And in many cases, it turned out to be not surgery. Because of the work he did, and he published, and he spoke, he was invited all over the world, at least a 1,000 lectures in over 30 countries. And every place he went, he realized that there were very bright orthopedic surgeons. But we found that they didn't have information. So what they were practicing, what they were doing, was with information that they didn't have, and if they had the good information, then they could do a better job because they had the knowledge, they had, they had the intellect, they had the skills, but they didn't have the knowledge. So about 16 years ago, he morphed that into a nonprofit foundation called Global Help, through which, with low-cost publishing, things that anybody in any country, on any mountain or any valley can get online, get information that they otherwise can't afford. I also have been to these developing countries. The library in the major hospitals is smaller than most of our libraries at home because they can't afford the books. Our books are much too expensive, and orthopedic books, forget about it. 
So he realized that, yes, he could have gone someplace and operate for a week, or he could figure out how to get the information to them and have them operate for the year, and the next year, and the next year. So education has been his <coughs> founding principle, how to get the information out. A lot of information that he developed, he discovered, he published, but also getting out the information that other people developed, published, and needs to get out to everybody so that all children in the world can get the same great care, ideally, that they get here in North America. Um, so this conference, again, his thinking outside the box said 50 years ago, how can I help educate people? How can I educate orthopedic surgeons? So 50 years ago, he started the yearly update in pediatric orthopedics for orthopedic surgeons. And he also said, all right, that's a different focus. What about the primary care providers? So we started this conference on how do we update primary care providers, people who are taking care of kids in all different specialties, how can we let you know what we know and believe about our subspecialty area? All we have to think is bones and joints. You have to think a lot of different parts of the body we never think about. So, so you can't know as much as we know about the musculoskeletal system. And we hope that by doing this every year, we've been able to provide that information in an easy way. You don't have to read the books. It's okay if you do. But if you come here, be updated, have us answer your questions. That's what this is all about. And now 50 years later, it's just so great to see such a large audience here to appreciate all the work that Lynn's done for all these decades. And we'll continue. Thank you. Lynn? And I guess... And I'll, I have to just say one more thing. We're not the only one who's recognizing his value. He's gotten a humanitarian awards from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons, Pediatric Orthopedic Society of North America. Anybody who's watching is giving him a humanitarian award, and he deserves every one of them. Thank, thanks, Lynn. Thanks, Vince. So uh, Vince failed to mention out of modesty that he's one of the uh, legacy uh, chairs of orthopedics that uh, Suzanne referenced and uh, did a great job for many years uh, succeeding Lynn as, as chief of orthopedics. So it's my pleasure to be here because uh, I've known Lana and, and Lynn Staley for a number of years, both uh, professionally and, and personally. And I'm not sure everyone here understands how important they are to this organization. Obviously, Lynn's legacy has been referenced uh, both in terms of his clinical contributions and his educational contributions. But both Lana and Lynn have also been very generous to this hospital in forming the Staley uh, Foundation or endowment that to this day continues to support orthopedic research. And it's been very, very productive and a wonderful uh, uh, gift to the department and to the hospital. As, as Vince mentioned, when Lynn quote unquote retired, he uh, actually continued to establish or, or enhance his legacy. And uh, although he began with this idea of low cost publication of textbooks, and, he, and I, it was really rather, I, I saw early on how he was actually learning how to do desktop publishing himself. This was 15 or 20 years ago. Uh, I was blown away at, at how sophisticated his, uh, his IT knowledge was. I had difficulty just working my, uh, Microsoft Office, and here he was publishing textbooks to distribute around the world, but it's gone even further now. He had, they have a website that uh, has on it information for all kinds of care, not just orthopedic care. He's also uh, led the development of a two-volume textbook on all of pediatric surgical care. He's got contributing authors from around the world, many people from this organization, it covers, again, not just orthopedics, but pediatric general surgery, urology, plastic surgery, et cetera. And through that, uh, and I will say I, I should mention that their website gets more hits than the children's hospital website gets, <laughs> which is extraordinary and speaks to how valuable it is as a resource around the world. So as Vince also mentioned, uh, people have been recognizing uh, Lynn for his, his contributions as a humanitarian. and. I, I think it's appropriate that today we have a special honor to bestow on, on, on Lynn. So um, we have created the Lynn Ter Taylor Staley Award, and the first recipient will be Dr. Lynn Staley. And this award says uh, the Seattle Children's Hospital Departments of Orthopedics and Surgical Services acknowledges with admiration Lynn Staley for his extraordinary commitment to humanitarianism through his decades of leadership and devoted effort to advance the surgical care of children around the world. 
Lynn, I can't thank you enough for all you've done for this organization, but for children throughout the world. It really is a remarkable legacy. Thank you very much. It's really, it's really a great honor to have received this award from Children's Hospital. And I, I might add that, you know, I worked here for, I started here uh, many years ago. And when it was still a tiny hospital, there was practically no, no full-time people. And, and I, I was really enamored by the hospital because of its philosophy, humanitarian philosophy. Because 110 years ago it was founded. It was one of the first hospitals in the United States that had this open, open, member, open, uh, 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 way of, of opening for everyone, for blacks, for whites, for every religion. It was really humanitarian and, uh, and also was very ahead of its time because it provided it provide care for everyone. There was no one turned away. And the families that could afford were paid, but the families that didn't have, didn't have money wouldn't, didn't pay. And I was always uh, impressed by that. And when I finished my residency here, I had two of, two of my five years in Children's Hospital as a resident. I said, that's what I want to do. I want to work at Children's Hospital. And I want to, I, I really, because I love this environment and this concept for this philosophy. And so that was very exciting to me. And over my 30 years of practice or so, I never once had to think about money in terms of taking care of the child. We could always think about what's best for the child, not what the reimbursement is or whatever else is, what is best for the child. And I, I really valued that tremendously in terms of a practice experience. And I think it set one of the examples for Seattle because Seattle has been kind of a center of humanitarianism. You know, Bill Gates Foundation, I think these things build on themselves. And the Gates Foundation says we believe that every person in the world has equal value. And what a great concept that is. Equal, everyone in the world has equal value. And we think that everyone in the world, every child in the world should have equal value, should have the same kind of opportunities, hopefully, that we have here. And one of the challenges is to try to spread this, this knowledge out, try to, improve the, uh, try to improve people that don't have the capacity. Because the people that are really left out in the world are the poor people. And so the, our organization is really focused on, on providing information which is usable around the world, which doesn't, doesn't use high-tech stuff, but in simple things that can be exported. And so we learn, try to learn from people in the developing world uh, what, how to manage things. And so we have a lot of that stuff on our website, and that's the goal. So we believe the future of, meta future of education is smartphone distribution and video type of material. And so this is what we're working on in global health. But it's so a pleasure to be here, and I want to acknowledge a lot of people. There's so many people who have made such a difference, but I want to especially acknowledge Lana that's been with me uh, through this whole process. We on the chair, uh, the, the chair we wouldn't have happened without Lana. She was, she was adamant that this was going to happen. But she's been, we've had, we've, Worked as volunteer volunteers for Global Health for the last 17 years, and and uh, and allowed that to happen. You know, we've uh, also financially supported, and she's been willing, very willing, very generous with her, with her time and her money and her efforts and her energy to do all of this. So I really appreciate that, Lana. And I also want to appreciate the department. The department has been so supportive for so many years, and people. There's so many people to acknowledge that I, I can't really acknowledge everyone, but thank you very much.